Hello everyone, Dr. Zia Tahir here. This video tutorial is about non-linear buckling analysis of thin cylindrical composite shell subjected to axial compressive load in a Bacchus CAE. So the composite cylindrical shell shell is fabricated from carbon fiber reinforced plastic laminates have internal diameter of 700 millimeter and overall length of 520 millimeter. The nominal thickness of shell wall is 1.32 millimeter and the thickness of each ply is 0.33 millimeter. The shells have different layup orientation. So here model one, model one because uh, there are two shells, uh, cylindrical shells here. So model one having layup orientation of plus 45 minus 45 symmetrical it's a four layer uh, four ply so it is plus 45 minus 45 plus 45 and minus 45 and model 2 have layup orientation of 0 45 minus 45 and 0 the mechanical properties of cfrp are below elastic modulus e11 is 52000 megapascal elastic modulus e22 is 50,000 megapascal and shear modulus G12, G13 and G23, they are 2350 megapascal and Poisson's ratio is 0 0.302. So what is required here? Determine buckling load under axial compression using non-linear analysis. So these two shells which I am going to analyze in this uh, tutorial, so they are actually from here experimental buckling of thin composite cylindrical shell in compression so for each lay up orientation 0 45 minus 45 0 so four shells were tested and that is their experimental buckling load and this is the analytical buckling load of that and then four shells are tested were plus 45 minus 45 symmetrical uh, like four ply and that is the buck experimental buckling load of it and then here is an ethical buckling load of that is 120.58 kilonewton and these uh, they, these models are analyzed in this paper again so they are being analyzed here the effect of asymmetric meshing on buckling behavior of composite shell so these are analyzed there and these properties and then all the parameters which are required like to analyze them so they are here so the steps to perform this analysis of non-linear buckling in a bacchus that contain first modeling then analysis and then results so in modeling need to first set the units then set work directory and then need to create part, partition, create material, create section, create mesh, create instance, and then create step, create load. Then there are two options I'm using here for loads and then create boundary condition and create a job, perform data check and submit. And then in the visualization, create X, Y data. So these are the steps which I'm going to follow. So the first you need to set check units which units you are going to use in this model length diameter and thickness they are in millimeter and modulus they are in megapascal so i am going to use that newton millimeter and megapascal set three of the units so the first of all you need to set work directory so here file set work directory so i have already set that any work di uh, work directory here and i have saved that model as shell nonlinear analysis so i have saved that already so the first step in the modeling is to create part and for that 3d deformable shell and extrusion so in a backus you have two option either you can go from here model tree or that the model database or you can use the mod module so like as part so you can click on part or you can double click on parts so if you double click on parts so that is a part one so 3d deformable shell extrusion 
and then approximate size is double of the dimension so because the diameter is 700 millimeters so i'm going to set that approximate size as 1000 so continue now i need to draw a shell and for that one i need to first draw its section and the section is a circular section with diameter of 350 so here i am going to use that uh, creating circle and then circle with 350 350 yeah that is there 350 diameter okay so then cancel procedure and then here you can add dimension to that to check it's so it is 350 okay so then cancel procedure so that section is done and now you need to it says that and condition for that extrusion so 520 millimeter is the length so i'm going to create that uh, add that so this one is a shell so this shell has length as 520 and its radius is 350 or diameter is 700 so that part is created next step is to create partition and why that partition phase is required that is to assign element size in longitudinal direction so like as so that partition of one face is required and for that one here uh, here you have options of these partition so that is a partition or otherwise you these four are the partition and it contain like so many different options and then here you have seen there are so many different options or otherwise tool and you have partition here so partition edge but we are going to partition that face and i'm using that use shortest distance between two points so i'm going to select that two points so i can create a partition between them so create partition so that partition is being created now and here you can see in the part and in the feature so there is a partition face there next in the property module need to create material and material is mechanical elastic and type is lamina i need to add mechanical properties there so here in the property module you can use that to create material the first option is create material or you can double click on that create material and i am going to the cfrp is the material so mechanical mechanical elasticity elastic and then type is here lamina and uh, these mechanical properties need to add in mega pascal because that me mega pascal is equivalent to newton per millimeter squared so that is 52000 uh, so 52000 then new is 0 0.302 and then uh, its shear modulus is 2350 so that is 2350 for all those so that material is being created here so you can double click on that to see material next step is to create section and that for that one is shell composite and then need to add thickness and orientation and once that section is being created next to assign section so for that one here for create section you have either option here or you can double click here on the sections so that section one is shell composite so continue and then here you will add plies because there are four plies but there are only two rows so i can add here add row after and then add row after so we have here like first for each ply material and then the thickness of each ply is 0 0.33 0 0.33 0 0.33 and then 0.33 because uh, thickness of each ply is 0 0.33 and first i'm going to use that model one it has layup orientation as four ply 45 minus 45 symmetrical so it is 
uh, first one is plus 45 then is minus 45 then plus 45 and then again minus 45 so okay so now that section has been created so then by clicking here i can assign section and it says select the region to be assigned a section so that is being selected so done and then here the thickness is from the section and middle surface i am going to use so now that section is being assigned the next one is mesh and create mesh and i'm going to use that seed edge by number and then mesh part and then assign element type and element type required is s4r so for that one uh, here go to the module so you can find mesh here or otherwise on the part double click mesh here and you can do first that the seed part so you can select that uh, so all part so like as 10 millimeter so i if i apply it so then like this edge everything on that uh long long uh, sorry in the longitudinal direction so that is 10 millimeter and all these on the circumference they are 10 millimeter otherwise you can go do one by one see edge so you select that one okay so see edge like you select that one and done and then approximate element size is 10 so if i'm trying going to try by number so like as the total length is 520 and then i'll have that 52 elements here so by number it is 52 here i'll apply that and it is the same one so 52 elements there and now uh, top and bottom edge i'm going to select and the circumference of uh, because uh, diameter is 700 and circumference is 2200 so if i divide that by 10 so then done and then if i divide that by 10 so total by number it will go as 220 so that will be 220 apply okay so done and in the mesh control mesh control is a quadratic dominant and free so i am going to use that as it is by default and then i'm going to assign mesh and now you can see that the mesh is like i try to make it a square so element length in both axial direction and circumferential direction that remain same and the next one is to assign element type so click on that and here in the family it is a shell and then i'm going to select that s4 r standard and geometry is linear so it's a four node doubly curved thin or thick shell with reduced integration or glass control and finite membrane strain so that s4 s uh, s4 r is selected so now the mesh part is done the next step is in assembly create instance it's very simple like here you can go to assembly module or you have here assembly module so double click on instance or just here create instance so it's a create instance from parts so that i have a one part so name of that is part one so okay so now you can see that one instance is there the next step is to create step and step is general static rigs so this static rigs method is used for mainly for non-linear buckling analysis so then i'm going to name it as buckle and i need to keep that non-linear geometry on so for that one you will have here in the load you have two options there either sorry step so here you have step so either you can double click on this step or you'll have here create step so create step and step initial then procedure type is general and then that is the static rigs static rigs continue and now here you need to keep that non-linear geometry on because it is a non-linear analysis 
and then incrementation i'm going for automatic so this is 100 number of increment and number of increment sometime the solution converge less than 100 but sometime it may go till 1000 it depends upon like what you have for uh, what is a model and arc length increment so initial arc length increment are uh, usually i use one percent of the total length because the to estimated total arc length is one so 0 0.01 and then the minimum by default it is one e raised by minus five so uh, it can go up to one e raised by minus 15 if the solution is not going to converge and even if with the initial arc length increment 1% is not going to work so it can be set as 0 0.01 and then in the basic one it's a stopping criteria so stopping criteria maximum load proportionality factor so max that how much is the maximum load proportionality factors so you can take it on and then you can actually find first buckling load using linear analysis so uh, how to get that uh, uh, buckling load so one way is which is a very quick way is using linear analysis or Egan value analysis and for that one uh, how to perform that Egan value analysis so you can go on my channel and there is a playlist about structural analysis and that back of structure analysis contain linear buckling analysis of thin cylindrical composite shell and the axial compression so that is a linear analysis and then in the linear analysis only the different part is to here is the create step so in that one is a linear perturbation and buckling buckle so you can watch that video and then based on that you can estimate that buckling load so whatever is the buckling load there so you can keep that stopping criteria but i'm not going to apply that as a stopping criteria in this video uh, like in this analysis so this is how you need to create step so now you can see that so that is a step so i am going to rename that as i am going to rename that as buckle okay so now that is a buckle and it is a non linear geometry on and i'm not going to use any maximum load proportionality factor there and then here you can use those parameter the next one in the load to create load there is a very simple option there is a very simple option to create load and that is a shell edge load and in that case unit load is divided by the circumference in millimeter so that is 2199115 so let's say here in the load or in here in the module load and there is the first one is create load so let's say that is a load one and the name is buckle and i am using that shell edge load so shell edge load is load per unit length so the unit load i need to divide it by the circumference the circumference which is pi d pi times 700 so to get that uh, load as shell edge load so continue i'm going to select that top edge done and then its magnitude is unit load divided by uh, divided by the circumference of the circle so that is 2199.115 so that is unit load per unit dimension so that 2199.115 is in millimeter that is the circumference of the circle so okay so now that load one is created for load there is another option so we can apply a concentrated force we can apply a concentrated force because uh, usually when uh, usually concentrated forces are being applied like that this is not a way actually how the load is being applied to a shell so usually a plate is used and then a point load or concentrated load is being applied on that 
so for that case there is a second option that the load is being applied as a point load and what is required for that need to go part and then create our node set and then in the part need to create reference point and then again need to create interaction so again i'm going step by step so first i need to create a set and like i'll go back into the part and in the part there is a here is set so for the set i am going and i'm going to name it as node set node set for nodes continue and then select the node for the set so i am using by feature edge edge and that is by feature edge yeah, so all that nodes on that top edge they are being selected for that node set so after that a reference point need to create and for that a point need to be select so for that again in the uh, model here in the tool there is a reference point and then uh, it says that select a point to act as a reference point and that is the reference point selected sorry that is the reference point selected right on the uh, this is on the right on the top edge so that is selected right on the top edge so like you can see here so that is right on the top and then i'm going to so that is the ref, reference point and this reference point you can see it's there is the reference point so reference point has been created next one i need to create constraint in interaction and need to connect that uh, node set to the reference point so for that one here we will have interactions and in interaction there is constraint or otherwise you have here directly constraint so double click on constraint and constraint one is i'm going to use that rigid body constraint continue and then here is nodes so pin nodes so continue here and then there is a set of nodes continue and then see reference point so click on that and then click on the reference point so okay so now you can see that that reference point is connected to that set of nodes so that one so now load in the second option create load and then concentrated force unit load on reference point and for that one here let's say i'm going to create a load and it says that load buckle concentrated force continue and then so it says select point for the load so i'm going to select that reference point done and then concentrated force here in negative z direction so that is minus one so okay so now that is load two is being applied so now we have two options here we have two options here either we can select that load one which is straightforward but sometime you need to apply a point load so then you need to follow these four steps for option two so here you have load one and then load two so what okay so i am going to uh, use that load one so load two i am going to suppress that one and the constraint associated with that i need to suppress that one but if you are going for load two option so then you can you have to suppress that load one next step is in the load module create boundary condition and what are the boundary condition so this uh, model is taken from this experimental 
from a paper experimental buckling of thin composite cylindric shells in compression so in that case in this one the shell is basically the shell that is both of its edges so they are fixed so the only from the top uh, only one motion in the vertical direction it is uh, non zero and here the same one uh, is being analyzed here effect of asymmetric maximum buckling behavior composite shell under axial compression and the same numerical model used here and the boundary conditions are used as fixed boundary condition were used all three translational displacement and three rotational displacement were fixed at the bottom of the cell while only axial translational displacement three at the top of shell to apply axial compressive load on the circumference of the cell shell so for to create boundary condition you have here uh, in load the second option this one is create boundary condition or just double click on that boundary condition so boundary condition and then step is initial displacement and rotation and i'm going to select that continue and going to select that lower edge done and lower edge is basically fixed so you can use in caster as well for that lower boundary condition for lower edge so then here for the top edge create boundary condition so bc2 initial displacement rotation continue i'm going to select that top edge done and u1 u2 ur1 ur2 and ur3 so all zero and only u3 is non zero to apply load so now still here so both boundary condition they are being applied so now that one is all done like the model is finished so in this tutorial uh, there are two shells model 1 and model 2 they have only layup orientation different but rest of everything is same mechanical properties and the dimensions they are same so the only difference between two model is in section so where that layup orientation is applied so for model 2 i have already that model 1 so i'm going to copy that copy model 2 so that is model 2 so the only difference between model 1 and model 2 is the section so i click on that and then in the section i'm going to change its or layup orientation so 0 then is plus 45 then is minus 45 and then again is 0 so 0 plus 45 minus 45 and 0 so okay so now the second model that contain a different section so now the modeling of part 1 and part 2 is done so next step is analysis need to create job then perform data check and submit because i have two models so now here on the job or you can go here in the module and then you can create job from here so job one that correspond to model one so continue i'm leaving that rest everything or double click on job job two correspond to model two so continue okay so those two jobs are created so first you need to uh, apply data check so job one check submitted and then data check for the second one so data check will help you to uh, check that if all necessary steps are performed so data check will not tell you that if your model is correct or incorrect but all that necessary uh, steps required for the modeling so they are okay now so you see that the check is completed so once the check is completed then i can submit that submit the job and then so once you start running so then i'll submit other one okay so it will take some time to uh, finish uh, complete that job so you can monitor that by clicking right clicking on that 
so you can monitor the status of its running and then you can see that increment with the time step of 0 0.01 it is being applied so you can see that one two three four so that is see going and then similarly here here you can monitor the second one and it is also running so now both jobs are being aborted so right click on that to monitor it so that what's wrong with it and here you can see that after 70 increment too many attempts made for this increment so there are five attempts for that so it is being aborted and the other one again here in the monitor so it is being aborted so then to check that if for 75 increment uh, is the solution is going to converge or it is going to buckle so if it is not so then uh, you can change that initial arc length to 0 0.001 and then like here in buckle so you can go back and then you can have here change this one to 0 0.001 and then the minimum as 0 0.05 okay so the next step is the visualization so for that one for the visualization i'll right click here and i'll go to the results or here file open and then you can open that to read only job two so that is the job one and then that is the job two or you can here right click on that and then you can go to the results so now let's say job one so it is being like compressed and i can check here the status so like as here you can see it start it started buckling okay and then it keep on so then it start compressing so that is displacement for that and how to get the buckling load you need to create xy data then source otb history output and lpf for whole model so it's very simple here you have create xy data odb history output continue then you have a long list of that and there is a load proportionality factor lpf for whole model and i'm going to plot that so because this is job two i have selected and for job two then maximum value of load proportionality factor is the buckling load so that or i can again i can plot that one here so load proportionality factor plot and I'm going to save it as LPF of whole model 2. Okay, so that is being saved in that XY data. And similarly for job 1, I'll see that how it is going to buckle. And that is U. And then again, create XY data, ODB history output, continue load proportionality factor plot and then save as load proportionality factor of whole model one okay so dismissed and then here you can see that again so at some point it is it buckle okay so like 50 i believe that 50 increment are okay for this one and for this one again it is going 75 so 15 increments so they are okay so now that is a load proportionality for whole model so that is here you can see that uh, the load buckling load is 119 kilonewton for model one so here uh, for these models analytical solution 
for model one is 118.58 or in this one it is about 120 analytical buckling load for one is 120 and the other one is 240 and what comes here it is 119 which is very close to the analytical one and so for model one the buckling load is very close to the analytical one and then lpf of whole model and the maximum value of load proportionality factor and that maximum value is about 276 kilonewton and what is presented in this uh, here it is 240 or even here it is 240 so uh, that buckling load here for non-linear analysis that is way higher than uh, compared to analytical buckling load so then uh, need to perform a mesh sensitivity study by even further reducing the element size because here the element size is like the element size is uh, 10 millimeter so it can be reduced to further value so then you will get results more close to analytical one because here in this paper you can see that when in the Ricks analysis so when 104 element in axial direction and 440 element in circumferential direction are used so then the buckling load is 241.21 which is very close to the analytical one and like as what i have used now that is somehow 62 so the results are like when 10 millimeter size is being used so the load is somehow 251.37 so or like this one here you can see as the number of element is increasing so the buckling load is going to decrease so by reducing element size more accurate results can be obtained for this model so now uh, non-linear analysis is being performed for both of the model in the end now summary so in the summary here in the tutorial two models were analyzed so mechanical properties and dimension of both models were exactly same only layup orientation is being changed so in a back test we have modeling analysis and results so in the modeling so first i set units as newton millimeter and megapascal and I create a part, then a partition phase is used so that I can uh, easily change size in element direct uh, in longitudinal direction. And then I created a material for the lamina, and then the section need to assign layup orientation and mesh by numbers like in axial direction or longitudinal direction and circumferential direction. Uh, I performed and then element size as 4 r is used the next one uh, because for non-linear buckling analysis of cylindrical shell so the step is general static rigs and non-linear geometry on for that so to apply load uh, i have here explained two options the option one is a straightforward shell edge load but for shell edge load you need to use that unit uh, so shell edge load is a load per unit length so you need to divide that uh, circumferential oh sorry uh, circumference by the unit load so that is a straightforward but the other option if you want to apply a concentrated uh, load then you can have to create a set node set and then create a reference point and then you need to connect that reference point with that node set using constraint and then figure body constraints are being used and finally the boundary condition like a fixed boundary condition uh, at the uh, lower edge and at the top edge uh, all translational and rotational displacements were set to zero except that in the vertical direction to apply the load and then need to create a job data set and visualization create xy data and the source is ODB history output and then LPF of whole model and the 
LPA maximum value of LPF that gave the critical buckling load of the structure. So I hope that uh, you like this video. Thank you very much for watching. So you can leave comments or your feedback and you can subscribe my channel for more videos on abacus and and finite element analysis.